Greetings, dear friends. Um, in this slide, we will try and consider and understand the miracle of Lanciano, which took place in Italy in 750 AD. Uh, most of you would have heard about this, but I would like to go into details to help us understand the beauty of Holy Mass and the Eucharist that we believe in. Firstly, if you remember, there was a Roman centurion who pierced the side of Jesus Christ. According to holy tradition, his name happens to be Longinus, the Roman centurion who pierced the side of Jesus hailed from Lanciano. He had a very poor vision. On regaining his sight miraculously, that is when he pierced the side of Christ, blood and water came out as the Gospels tell us. Apparently that fell onto his face or eyes and he regained his sight miraculously. It so happened that Longinus became a convert and died as a martyr. Later, a church was built over his tomb and dedicated to Saint Longinus. This church remained under the custody of the Basilian monks or the monks of Saint Basil. The Eucharistic phenomenon at Lanciano is perhaps the most prestigious Eucharistic miracle in the world, not only because the sacred relics are still preserved intact in a monstrance that all can see and venerate even after a lasp of more than 1,266 years, but also because of the numerous investigations and authentications that have been made about it. What was really the miracle of Lanciano? In the year 750 AD, a monk belonging to the religious order of Saint Basil was celebrating Holy Mass or the Divine Liturgy, or the Holy Eucharist, as we call it, in the Church of St. Longinus. Unfortunately, he had recurring doubts about the real presence of Jesus in the Holy Eucharist. Notice that for all the miracles that we, you will hear about in the coming series, there has always been some kind of a doubt that, has, that people have had before the miracle has happened, which is why God demonstrates us a miracle to show us that we ought to really believe in the blessed Lord of the Eucharist. As soon as the monk pronounced the words of consecration, which is, this is my body, this is my blood, the monk was stunned to see the host change, the appearance of the host change into real flesh, and the wine changing into real blood. He was visibly taken aback at this incredible incident. Confused and humbled by such an awe-inspiring miracle, the celebrant knelt down and silently worshipped the Eucharistic Lord and thanked him for strengthening his faith through visible manifestation of his presence. When that monk regained his composure, he stood up and invited the faithful to come forward and to behold the miraculous real flesh and real blood of Jesus Christ. At these words, the congregation surged forward, it seems, and saw for themselves the miraculous flesh and blood of our Savior and cried out with tears, Have mercy on us, O Lord, have mercy, is how they cried out. News of this incident, it so happened that it spread far and wide with the speed of lightning. Within a short time, the entire city was there to witness this phenomenon, which was God's gift to the people of Lanciano and of the world. The host flesh that can be seen even now very distinctly has the same dimensions as the large host used today 
in the Latin rite. However, it is light brown and appears rose colored when there is light from the back side. So when, when you put a light right behind the real flesh turned host, it appears rose colored. Gradually, the blood in the chalice, it seems coagulated into five globules or pellets of unequal sizes and irregular shapes. That's what happens, right? When uh, you put blood in a vessel, it would automatically coagulate or it will become an unequal pellet of various sizes. Now, what is most strange is these globules have the same weight when weighed either separately or together. The weight being always 15.85 grams. Now, whether the globule was small or large, it weighed the same. This is very strange. Initially, the monks of St. Basil had the custody of the church and the relics. Then, in 1176 AD, these passed into the hands of the Benedictine monks. Later, in 1252, both the church and the relics fell under the custody of the Franciscans who continue to treasure them even now. They rebuilt the church and called it St. Francis Church. The monstrance containing the relics is now located in the tabernacle atop the main tabernacle of the high altar in a new erected church of St. Francis of Lanciano, at Lanciano, sorry. A stairway at the back of the altar enables the visitors to approach very close to the tabernacle, which is open at the back, so that they can clearly see the reliquary containing the real flesh and the real blood of Jesus. So what has happened during the past 1266 odd years different bishops of the diocese of Lanciano have made scientific investigations into this these holy relics all of them testified in no uncertain terms that these facts were true and miraculous what is unique about the Catholic Church is that there will be specific investigation done for any and every single miracle. It's only after that 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 does the church say that it has achieved ecclesiastical rec recognition. The most thorough scientific investigation was undertaken in the year 1970 to 1971 by Professor Dr. Edward Linoli. He is the most reputed scientist of the day in anatomy and pathological histology or histology and in chemistry and in clinical microscopy as well it seems he was assisted by another doctor called as dr yugero bertli of the university of siena they had the blessings and the financial assistance of the vatican of the archbishop of lanciano and the provincial superior of the franciscans in abruzzo Strict scientific criteria were followed in this investigation. On March 4, 1971, copies of their report were forwarded to the local bishop, to the superior general of the Franciscan congregation, and to His Holiness Pope Paul VI, who was there at that time. In 1973, a scientific commission appointed by the Chief Advisory Board of the WHO, which is the World Health Organization, undertook 500 tests on the miraculous relics of Lanciano during a period of 15 months and came to the same conclusions as those of Dr. Lenoni and his team. The United Nations published the findings of this commission in December 1976 in New York and Geneva. When Pope John Paul II, who is now Saint Pope John Paul II, when he was the Cardinal at Krakow, 
Pope John Paul II at that time had visited the church of St. Francis in Lanciano and revered the sacred relic. The major findings of Dr. Lenoli and his team are firstly, the miraculous flesh is authentic flesh and the miraculous blood is real blood. Second, the flesh and the blood belong to human species. Thirdly, the flesh consists of the muscular striated tissue of the heart, which is actually called as the myocardium. Next, the flesh and the blood belong to the same blood type, which happens to be AB negative, the same blood type as that of the man of the Shroud of Turin and the type most characteristic of Middle Eastern populations. Next, there have been no traces of preservations or preservatives in the relics, not even in embalming. Lastly, they concluded saying that the preservation of the flesh and blood for centuries together remains an extraordinary phenomenon seeing that the relics were constantly exposed to the action of atmospheric and biological agents. As I conclude, my dear friends, this is the beauty of the Holy Mass and the Eucharist that we believe in. May we be strengthened with each of these miracles that we will invest time in and learn. Through the prayers of our Holy Fathers, Lord Jesus Christ, our God, have mercy on us and save us. Amen.